evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. And we just want to come on and welcome everybody back to another episode of the Black Belt Experience. And I'll tell you, man, is we've been going strong for a while. And let everybody know, man, this is episode 49. 49. Can you believe that? Episode 49. We've been going strong for a long time. And uh, we're on episode 49. And we got the fellas in here, man. What's going on? What's going on? Uh, Larry, how you doing? Doing good, man. Doing pretty good. Hey, that Larry either driving, traveling, or eating, boy, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> got to get it. <laughs> What's going on, Robert? How you doing? Okay. Okay, Robert, and then we got we got old Duck. What's going on, Duck? How you doing? Man, I have no complaints. Everything is it's almost perfect. No complaints. No complaints, man. So we we glad, man. We glad to have everybody back on. What's going on, Fred? How you doing? Daytron Coach, what's going on? He said, What's up, fellas? We got Miss Belinda Ryan's uh Smith said good evening. Miss Shirley Shepherd said good evening. How you doing, Miss Miss Dayla Maynard? How you doing, ma'am? Good evening, good evening. Uh, I think Miss Valeda is talking to everybody except Robert. She said, "Good evening, young man, young man." So, uh, uh, good evening, Valeda. How you doing, Miss <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn Richards? Good evening to you. She said, "Good evening, guys." So, uh, Miss Dorothy Jones, thank you again so much tuning in all the way from Tucson, Arizona. We thank you. You you tune in every week. We look forward to seeing you. Thank you so much, man. We got a lot of stuff to talk about, man. This this week. Um, and you know, we just want to go ahead on and, and and really jump into it. Um, uh, good evening to you, Miss Jones. But make sure y'all share this and let people know what's going on. Uh, you don't want to miss tonight because tonight we got uh, we didn't do it last week, we're gonna do it this week. We got a special giveaway tonight for a custom rug for Jay's custom rug, so we'll be doing that towards the end of the show. So, you guys, uh, um, make sure you guys tune in. Um, hey, she said, brother, you know you my special guy, and I love you. Hey, she shout out to Miss Belated. Miss Jones, good evening, everyone. Good to see Mr. Pernell and Mr. Long on yesterday. She said, good to see you. I was out and about down, down in, in, in Greensboro. Joyce Jones said, hello, everyone. Sheila Hall, how you doing? She said, hello. Uh, Miss, Miss, Miss Mary Jo Wiggins said, good morning, guys. Good morning. And that's who we were. We got it in the building. We got the two people in the building. Miss Claritha Ryan said, good afternoon. How you doing, ma'am? And Mother Ryan. She said, good evening from North Carolina, all the way in North Kakalaki. And what's going on, Kimmy? What's going on, Kim? Good evening to you. So we're going to go ahead on and jump into our sponsors. With That's a great segue from Kimmy Corners Creation is our first sponsor. Uh, uh, we got uh, Kimmy's Corners Creation. She's been rocking with us for a long time. Uh, if you want, you got any idea? You got T-shirts? If you got, uh, I got, I got her working some T-shirts for me right now. You got any ideas for birthdays, whatever? Make sure you reach out to her. Go to her Facebook page, Kimmy's Corners Creation. Uh, shout out to her. She just hit a thousand followers on Facebook, and her face, uh, also her website, uh, www. Next, we have the T-shirt bar with Lakeisha Davis uh, up in Demobolis in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I also got an order for her, working on some T-shirts for me. Uh, proud, proud of her, man. She's doing great things, I'll tell you. If you're looking for top-notch uh, professional organization, she is the one to call. Reach out to her and let her know that you heard it here on the Black Belt Experience. Next, we have the Man of Valor of Greensboro, Alabama. They continue to do great things, and we continue to celebrate them. Very proud of them for their engagement and their empowerment in the, within the community. They answered the call and they have been, they have not looked back since they started. So shout out to them. Next, we have the Schoolhouse All Location Center. If you're looking for a space, a space to have in a family event or a wedding or just some just want to get together, uh, they real good to uh reach out to. And it's owned and operated by Mr. Larry Jones. Look up them up on the Facebook page, Schoolhouse All Location Center on Facebook, and let them know that you heard it here on the Black Bed Experience. And our last sponsor is a Southern Bike Restaurant. Coming soon to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, owned and operated by Lakeisha Davis. Go and look out for that. We're going to get right back into the comments of the night. We got uh, Duck, Duck said, hey, good evening to all the faithful uh, Black Belt viewers. Then we got Allie Cat. She said, hello, how you doing? Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you watching tonight. Uh, Chris Hill Jones watching. Thanks, Chris Hill. How you doing? Oh, Lamin. Lamin said, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Everyone. 
while he eating. Uh, uh, <laughs> Jaden, hey, y'all. Yeah, Jaden, I, I, I can't wait to see you. Like, you can't wait to see me. And I'm going to tell you like it is, straight to your face. Now, that's a joke. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Hey, Mom, we got to miss Miss Elaine Harris. How you doing, Mom? Very soon. I'll be coming down to see you. I will be coming down to see you. Uh, <laughs> she said, where's the hat, Duck? People looking for the hat, man. They want to make sure you got the hat. Miss Cindy Jones said hello, everyone. Miss Sharon Renee Wood Wilson, she said hello. And Crystal Small said hello. So we're getting through the comments. We're just going to go ahead on and jump into it. So the first thing, man, we had uh, some sports going on, and I heard it got pretty heated between, uh, you know, Marion was undefeated. I'm tracking Mary, uh, friends of Mary was undefeated, but they took their first loss, if I'm not mistaken, down to Wilcox County. So uh, I know some people said they were looking for that, uh, that, that, that game to come back, and uh, I know some good rivers going on, switching over to basketball season right now. Uh, I know they uh, – shout out to, again, Pickens County for coming up, uh, uh, runner up in the state championship game. Um, um, and shout out to the city of reform. And before we even get started, man, man, shout out to the black belt. What I mean by that, I mean they just show out throughout the black belt for the Christmas parades. I heard Greensboro folks saying the one in Greensboro was the best one they done had ever. They said Newber had one that was five. Newber reform had one. <laughs> Marion Union Town. I'm talking about man. I, it is. It, it is. This reminds me. Of uh, uh, very, you know, it was very nostalgic for me. Even though I'm all the way up here in New York, it got me excited about coming home and just being around and seeing my people because that's how it was when we was growing up. You know, we had all the bands marching way back when Robert was in the band with Mr. Uh, shout out to Mr. Green. I ain't gonna lie, Mr. Green was the best band director the Black Belt has ever seen. And, and like, 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 like Duck said, prove me wrong on that one. Because look, we was about we was about 150 200 strong in in high school. Easy. I'm talking about easy. I mean, we just had a long line of band directors. Mr. Green retired. We had Miss Ryan. I mean, we did it big. And, and and for people that don't know, man, I was in the band, marching in the band like fourth grade. So I was in the band for a long time. So that just seeing all that, seeing the kids, seeing the community coming together, seeing everybody got their got their cars. I mean, it was good, good to see. Uh, uh, Miss Barbara uh, Sneed Williams said, uh, "Good evening." <clears throat> Javen said, "They definitely showed out." And Miss uh, Miss Miss Woods Wilson said, "Shout out to Nuba. What's so funny, Larry?" <laughs> well, I actually, uh, my aunt told me that um that they went to the parade to another parade. I said, "Y'all went to Marion because the Marion parade was like that night." So yeah. no, Nuba had a parade. So I just never known Nuba had a parade. But for it to be such a small, I know it's a well knit community down there. But to see them come together and and, and um actually have a parade, you know, that's that, that's a big deal. That's yeah, a big I mean, deal. And that's what we like. Honestly, that's what we really. That's the essence of what we try to promote on the show is just coming together. Because guess what? There's a lot of things. It don't take that much for us to come together, have a good time, right? At the end of the day, you think about it, right? Shoot, we had a good time hanging out in the parking lot at Fuller's until the police ran us off. <laughs> 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 I mean, just hanging out at the park, man. I mean, that's just how we do, man. So you make the best of it. Uh, Portia said, "What's up, y'all?" Uh, um, Portia said she was announcing in the fifth. I don't know what she's talking about. I don't know, don't know what Portia's talking about. Uh, they said the committee did a great job in Greensboro. So Greensboro, they said it was the bomb. The parade did a great job. So, hey, shout out to that, man. We appreciate that. Really look forward to that. Um, glad about that, man. Uh, and Portia said it looked great. Portia, I think Portia went all of them. <laughs> I know she, she probably did. I'm marrying. Um, um, and um, I think she went to the one in Greensboro as well. So last thing, man, we had some graduations. Since a lot of graduations this past week, people graduated from college, man. Uh, we got shout out to uh, uh, Dania Hill, Dr. Hill. She got her doctor's degree. She graduated from the University of Alabama with her doctor's degree. So shout out to her, man. Very proud of her. Even though she went to Alabama State, I ain't gonna hold that against her. But uh, I'm proud of her. Very proud of her. Uh, we had some other other young young people got their CNAs, got their uh, nursing nursing degrees. I mean, people going to do it. They got their, my, shout out to my niece, Megan Hinton, for getting her master's degree in education over there at the University of West Alabama, her and her sister. Very proud of her, man, doing her things. And I just want to celebrate everybody that continues to work for it. Keep going for your goal. Keep doing your thing. So, uh, yeah, um, that is it. Poor said she just went to Union Town and married. So, okay, she ain't trying to be superwoman this weekend, but shout out to her. But 
Speaking of that, now we're going to go ahead on and get on some stuff that I know people want to talk about. Now, there was an incident that happened at the school that there was a lot of different things going around. A lot of different, um, I, some videos going around, alleged incident of some kids getting in fighting. And I know that people have been attacking or not attacking, but I know there was some conversation that I've seen on social media speaking about uh, um, speaking about um the principal and talking about the administration and all this, right? And then there was some comments that was talking about um, the kid, uh, alleged kid that was uh, in the incident and saying the kid was being assaulted. There was some other videos going around that was kind of showing a different story. There was other parents that was talking to kids that gave different different things. And I would just say with all of that, right, this is not to try to try, try to spread any uh, negativity, but I would just say as a community, what we, the biggest thing we need to do is come together and, and find out what's going on, right? Because for me, right, we can point fingers all day, but what can we do as a community to come together? Because guess what? If we sit there and we point fingers all the time and never really want to uh, take solution and take ownership of what role that we play, we'll continue to find ourselves in the same thing. So uh, I would just say with all involved, I was just sorry to see what happened, but um, I don't know. Y'all got anything y'all want to say on that? I do. Go ahead. I, I, think, I think one of the main issues is the grown folks. Um, in the sermons today, it talked about how, you know, the generation that died in the wilderness, how they made the next generation toxic because they were doing what the ones did before them. And I think we're doing that same thing. A lot of the comments or, 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 or comment, uh, comment, commentators on Facebook were saying things that didn't even happen. They got other people roused up and they were attacking certain, you know, teachers and things of that nature. But the fact that the commentators were was was making something bigger than what it really was. It got people up in arms instead of people trying to figure out what's really going on. Um, Kids are on the same Facebook page that a lot of their parents are on. Like, I, my kids, they not on, you know, they block me for some reason. I don't know why, but they don't want me to know what they got going on there. Like, that's fine. But the kids hear what the grown folks saying about the principal, the teachers, and we wonder why the kids don't respect uh, the teachers. And a lot of times, because of what they hear mom and dad say. If my mama don't like you, then they ain't got to like you. And I think as adults, we hear ourselves as adults and really find out what's going on instead of going straight to social media and want to be the first one to report like you channel six news or or you want to be the first one to make a deep comment to try to you know block somebody you know really come and see what can we do to better the situation well let um, me i, I want to say this though i know some, mm -hmm. uh, particularly portia just made this comment but i what what i got was um um, that from what I saw is it saying like a teacher drug a kid down the steps. And, and, and it was more graphic and his head was bouncing off the steps as he was going down. But that, that first thing that I heard that he was dragging him off the steps and then what I was, I was able to see him. And when in, in the video, what I saw was I saw another student grabbing the kid and, and, and bringing the kid down the steps. And you know, you you got in on a certain point and, and when you're looking at things, especially you have to be uh, cognitive and and I know it's hard sometimes, especially if, if your child involved, to kind of look at it from an unbiased or or a uh, um, just from a um, just from a, a clear head, right? You know, people get it emotionally involved when you start talking about kids, right? But then I just looked at the situation and I thought about it, and when I watched it, I looked at it about from when we was in school, right? Like it was just I'm just being honest with you, I cannot recall. A situation in where I'm not saying we 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 you know pe we threw hands in school, but when a, when when a uh, and a teacher came around or somebody in authority came around, it was it didn't last long like that. It was kind of disseminated, and then if they spoke, you know, it was more of a respect thing. Yeah, we still be mad and we probably fought after school, but it wasn't nothing like you know kind of see kind of what 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 we were seeing going on, and just like what you said, Lemon, I think. A lot of times with parents, what we really have to do is we have to realize what our actions are and how our actions impact our kids. And I don't think we do. I think a lot of times we just get more into this mama bear, uh, papa bear mode 
to where, you know, oh, I'm just all about mine. But we had to realize, you know, re this is a reality, right? We, we got our kids dying in the streets because we're reacting the same way. We can't come to a solution on something about somebody said something, right? Um, and, and, and I'm going to just be honest with you. These teachers don't get paid enough for that, man. I agree. And another thing, Robert, growing up, grown folks kept us out of their conversation. Facts. They're not doing that now. Well, do you think, Larry, I'm gonna ask you this question though. Do you think that it's because a lot of a lot of our generations had kids young and the kids really grew up with us, and then and then they get in this mindset like, well, I, I don't want to be so hard and so strict. Because see, I talked about this on my show yesterday about uh accountability and structure can feel <coughs> like punishment. It can feel I had, like I had kids young too. But some of those same principles that I grew up with, I, I didn't say because my mom and them did me like that, I'm not going to do my kids like that because it helped me be who I am today. Like a lot of things I didn't understand. But like you said, as you got older, you understood. So now that I'm older and I have kids, those same principles, I try to instill them into my children, whether they listening or not. You know, this is for your best benefit. You may be like me, not really paying no attention. But hopefully if you live to see my age, you can look back and say, now I understand what daddy was saying. So I still try to instill those principles into mine. But let me, the young the younger generation say, hey man, we ain't like y'all, man. Y'all ain't ain't nobody just gonna talk to us. We grown. I mean, we 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 got our own opinion. You see what I'm saying? If I feel the same way, you ain't gonna just talk to me that way. You know, and we saying? had our opinion, but if you talk back, you got it, you got knocked back. Yeah, but, Bottom but line. I'm just saying, man, but you can't put your hands on me. I Lies got you tell. Lies I got you tell. Hand. I go to jail behind man. I ain't gonna lie. I go to jail. Cause one thing about me, I worked in the prison system for 12 years. And a lot of parents, ain't nobody gonna put their hands on my child. When they get in that system, people gonna put their hands on your child in more than one way. And ain't nothing you can do about it. So if somebody out there that cares enough about your child to waste their energy and their time and their effort to correct your child, respect that individual. They ain't trying to hurt your child, they're trying to save your child. And I think that's what parents are wrong. Ain't nobody finna say nothing to my child, ain't nobody finna do nothing to my child. You ought to be glad somebody cared enough to even waste they, they breath to even say something to your child. Because a lot of these teachers, they don't because of they don't want them, you know, them coming back from the parents because I don't get paid enough for this. Well, a, lo a lot of it is like this, though. Um, it, I, it is more so the system, though, right? And, and once you know, and we're going to talk about some system stuff in a second, but once you know the system, how the system is designed to be favorable, you know, like, think about it. It started when we was in school with this whole uh, um, telling people they can't discipline their kids, but I'm going to still hold you responsible. So, you know, just like any child, a child, know, like, especially if you, you you got kids, kids will naturally try to exploit whatever they can to get their way. I'm going to jail. With like right now, it's certain school systems that's saying that uh, you can't even give your kid a zero, even if they don't do no work, because they say it's so hard for them to overcome it. Uh, but you know, in, in, but then now Portia said this. Portia, I used to talk back. That's why I stayed in trouble. It's a difference between talking back and being disrespectful. Blatant disrespect, cussing, and, and all that like, type of stuff. With you. Like we can talk back, but I guarantee you, Portia, you ain't never cussed no teacher out. You said whatever you wanted to say, but then like this is the thing too. You know, man, I mean, you hit on a man. You hit on a great point, and this is a this is a good point about this, right? When them jokers come in the military, man, they struggle, bro. They struggle. They struggle. And a lot of them get kicked out. And they want to run back home. I even had a mama one time, son up there just cutting up, man. Got great potential, bad attitude, didn't want to do what he wanted to do. And I and literally, I was older than his mom. And I called his mom and was like, hey, look, I'm just letting you know, hey, your son, he's out, you know, he he's not cutting it. He's almost home, getting ready to get sent back home. You know what she said? She said, send my baby home. I'll take care of him. And I'll just say, you know. Um, he ain't no baby. He ain't no goddamn baby. <laughs> I wanted to say, I, I'm going I'm to say the PG verdict, but I said, take your breast out of his mouth and stop breastfeeding. Can I address <laughs> Portia real quick? Can ahead, I address yeah. Portia real quick? She said she would disrespect the two. Uh, I'm at the West Camp. Mr. Scott was my principal. I was down there at, at the best campus. And um, I thought I was a little Mac and Mix down there because we dealt with a lot of racism and stuff down there at, 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 at the West Campus. I ain't even going to lie, but they taught me how to deal with, with, with you know, uh, white people in the world. But um, I did some one time. 
And Mr. Scott was like, you got so much potential. And I'm not saying what you did was wrong. It's just in the setting you did it in and, and, and being a, a, a child, when you have people in leadership and you didn't go to them, not saying your ex was wrong, but I have to discipline you for your ex. You got to know when and when not to react. And that taught me something. A lot of time as young people, we think that we're being disrespected because we're being corrected. Yep. It doesn't mean that we're being disrespected. He beat my butt. I ain't gonna, he beat my butt. But I understood what he was saying. Yeah. Even though what I did was right in my eyes, everybody else's eyes, but the setting I was in made it wrong and the timing was wrong. Yeah. So a lot of time as young people, e e even I got a 22 year old, you talking to me like I'm an adolescent. Well, you're doing adolescent things. Well, you being disrespectful, no being your father. Hey. Oftentimes we get in our emotions because we don't like correction and we don't like people telling us what to do. They are in leadership. The Bible said we have to be good stewards of, uh, we have to be stewards over those, over our children, on our job. We have to be good stewards. They required of us of that. So oftentimes we feel like we're being respected, but we're really just being corrected. Yeah. Not disrespected. Not That's a difference. Jaden says some of us were bad as 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 you know what we fought and did everything else. It didn't just start. We're not arguing that it just started. What we're talking about the difference in how the kids are reacting uh, more so on average to towards the adults and the teachers. And that's what we're talking about. If, yeah, we fought. We ain't finna act like we ain't fight. We did. Listen, the Bible said there's nothing new under the sun, and it's not. The only difference right now, then, man, thank God we ain't had social media. That's the, I'm just being honest with you. And, and that's the only thing. A lot of things are being captured now more on video, right? But when we look at it, right, we can we can address it. And I just think in this situation, right, it really could have just been handled. I think this situation could be handled by uh, getting the understandings, right? And, and Portia, Portia, Portia brought this up. Portia said, most kids are adults at home. And that is a great point, Portia, because a lot of kids are, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Many of us as quote unquote parents has failed our kids because we have we have we have uh, uh, allowed our kids to assume adult responsibilities to make it easier to, 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 to ease the consequences of the choices we made as adults. And our kids are overwhelmed and they tired when they come to school and they so used to being in charge. I'm sorry. Go ahead, uh, uh, Robert. I'm going to go back to you, Larry. <laughs> I don't know if I 100 percent agree with that. Because I think nothing is new. Everything is everything is starts over. I can go back to my mom and my grandmother. The little time they went to school, they went to the field before they went to school. They assume adult roles. You know, and it's not because the parent, hold on. It's not because, you know, we having children young. My grandma had her first child when she was what, 13. And but the thing is, we don't have two-tier parenting anymore. You know, we don't have you know, grandma helping us raise our children or anything like that. In most, in, 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 in many cases, there are some, you know, listeners that, that goes in and help their, help their child raise their children. But back in the day, it was a sense of respect. We, even if they were wrong, you couldn't say nothing back. And when we went to school, yeah, I got in trouble. Like I was the main one pulling the fire uh, alarm. But uh, when it came to <laughs> what was going on in that school, my mama, when she came up there and she and she came to swinging, she swung on me. But if she saw something was wrong with the teacher, I never knew it. She yeah. came back and addressed that adult to adult. And to this day, I did I didn't know it. You know. So if she wouldn't come back and tell me you were right this time you were wrong, she wouldn't say anything. So you you respect the people around you because respect takes you a long way. Mm -hmm. It takes you up. It take, it, it, it's in, it puts you in place where education can. Well, Robert, what, I'm, what I'm speaking on is there's a difference between uh, um, giving ownership of responsibility and assisting a parent. And that's what I'm talking about. And what I'm speaking on the dynamic of there are some kids that are carrying the, 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 the weight of responsibility of running a home. Now, they ain't talking about getting up and going doing chores or helping out around the house. I'm talking about the, they are basically themselves. They're the ones that are running their homes. I'm talking about there's a lot of stuff that the letter of responsibility that our parents didn't put on us like a lot of these parents have been doing right now. And a lot of those responsibilities go because these parents don't want to grow up 
and be an adult about what their business is. That's a fact right there. They still want to go out. They still want to turn up. They still want to do all of those things, but not take on, the, not, not be responsible enough to say, you know what? I'm the one that had these kids. Why may not go out on the weekend? Because contrary, contrary to what, what, what we say, right? You know, <laughs> people, people say, there's a lot of things that people say, but what it really is, a lot of these folks that got kids, they ain't responsible and they don't want to be responsible. And since we talking about responsible parents and responsible adults, Doug, I got to call you out, man. Hold man. up, boy, you go. Boy, you get the duck. Maybe. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, I agree. I agree with you, Robert. But I, 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 but, but, but what Bert Tab said is absolutely correct. I'm gonna use this as an example. You may be with some of your your soldiers when you off duty, but when you get on duty, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. They know how to get in line children are be the same way i don't care what you are at home you ought to know when you at school you ain't running nothing you don't run your mouth unless you ask the teacher permission to talk it, it, it still ought to be a sense of order we live in a time now where there is no order there is simply chaos and it's simply because part of the reason is because you got a lot of parents I'm not going to do my child like my mama and them did me. I'm not going to make them go to church like my mama and them go to church. It didn't kill you. It ain't going to kill your child. And look how you turned out. Bad. When you change the recipe to a cake, then you, you, you anything can come out the stove. He turned out so, bad, so, Robert. So the issue is the principles that we were taught. We went away from. Being taught. Well, you don't have those principles and those morals. You don't have no foundation, which means you have no, 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 no type of of respect, what type of decency, because I was taught when I left home, when you leave this house, you represent us. And my grandma and granddaddy weren't gonna have us going acting on food because we was a representation of who they were. Absolutely. And we knew if we did something wrong, we was gonna get halfway killed, and they put the fear of the Lord in us, and they let us know, I'm gonna beat your butt. Facts. Well, these parents ain't, 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 most of these parents are not uh, 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 chastising their children because they scared of them because they never put those principles in them. When, when, when they was five years old, three cussing. Oh, that's so cute. <clears throat> cussing. You can't do that with them no more. It ain't cute no more. They were slapping you when they were three and four were cute. But now they slapping you, it ain't cute no more. That's the issue. We changed our parents. Well, I mean, we saying that, but it was our generation that did it. And I, I want to... I want, oh, yeah. I, go ahead, bro. Tab, not me and your gen, my, not me and you, duck generation. Maybe Robert generation. Hey, listen, you like, hey man, I'm, I'm about three months behind you. You talking about uh, <laughs> you? You an eighties baby, Robert? <laughs> hey, I'm a seventies baby up here, man. Don't, don't uh, okay, then, that, man. okay, then. Okay, then. Okay, then. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait. My, my bad. I stand but, that, but what I'm saying is, we did it because guess what? Right? We didn't like. We didn't like. Uh, um. But but I would tell you, we putting it all on these kids, but I'm talking about these parents, man. And we don't like to put the responsibility on these parents because a lot of these parents are felon. And speaking of felon parents, I got to call Duck out, man. Get him. On, Get hey, him. On social media, boy, they going in. They saying Duck a deadbeat dad. They saying he ain't paying child support. They said that they said they they said it. So we call everybody out on this show, and I'm gonna publicly call you out, Duck. What you got to say about that? <laughs> Uh, unmuted. Uh, he unmuted. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. They say you a deadbeat dad, man. They say you don't take care of your kids. <clears throat> hey, man. Uh, first of all, how y'all you doing? I went to school with a bunch of people. Uh -oh. And I was in the military somewhat, but I ain't run across nobody called Dave. You was in the well, Navy. Dave, you weren't in the military. You was in the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> I worked for him for about. It's a different. It's a different. It's a different. Hey, hey, but don't listen, no man. Here's the deal, man. The mouth will say anything, but though. When you actually present facts, that'll shut the mouth up. 
a deadbeat dad, I don't even hang around guys who do not take care of their kids. That's why you see me traveling with a few when I do travel. Uh, those are false accusations. And I'll say the reason why that person put that out because of bitterness and a whole lot of other stuff. But though that's not the issue right here. But though to say someone is the deadbeat dad, they will have to be obsolete from their child's life by their decision. You can't say that someone is a deadbeat dad who is taking care of their kids financially and who is trying to be involved in their child life. You cannot say that. That's a, see, see, that word, deadbeat, people look for a, a way out when they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And me personally, I pay 800 and something dollars every month. Hey, every month for child support. Hey, so whoever said, you know whoever, I have court huh? papers to prove you wrong, right? Yeah, what's up? No, no, no. Screenshot them. Screenshot them and send them on. Screenshot them and send them. Please do. Please do. Stop saying if, woulda, shoulda, and coulda. Come on with the paperwork. You know why I'm so confident? Because I know what I did. So let me ask you this. We're talking about my baby mama right now. That's who you're talking about, right? That's who they say. To be fair, yeah, that's, about that's, 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 that's who I'm Trust. speaking of. How much? How much? How much money do she contribute? How many months have she worked? Like I said, I've been out of prison for 12 years. She only worked maybe two months in them 12 years. So to say that a man is a deadbeat, what are you doing for your child? Other than uh, other than sending him to school and doing this, and you doing that so that you can get that $1,200. The smartest thing would be people that are trying to edge her up. The smarter thing would be Get you a job so that you can contribute to what the baby daddy is doing. Stop getting food stamps and welfare when you're able to do it. That's the only thing I'm saying. But no, Chef, I, I'm not going to entertain that right now. Now, because I got a whole lot of other positive stuff going on, man. I'm not going to entertain that. But they'll tell people to get up off of their ass and go to work. That go for any baby mama in the world. And I stand on what I said. Get up off your ass and go to work. And stop trying to bash these men who want well, to be in their father's You said life. that, Larry. I'm about to throw you a nice little alley hoop, man. Because uh, <laughs> we, 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 we didn't have this discussion before. And, and I would say this, man. Like, when you start talking about kids, and let's just be honest with you, right? Uh, let's just be honest with this, right? So I, myself, went through a divorce, uh, became a single dad myself. Uh, and I had custodial custody. I have custodial custody of my son. And... Uh, I would tell you that system, you know, most people, when they found out I had custodial custody of my son, it was looked like what happened, like something was wrong because I had custodial custody of my son. Um, I myself personally have never been on child support. I myself have never put my son's mother on child support. Right. Because when my son was living with me, I didn't need any additional thing because I was taken care of. We, I will tell you the thing about it, and shout out to my son's mother. Uh, we've always, she's, even though we had our issues, even though we had points of where we weren't talking and we weren't seeing uh, eye to eye on things, which now we, we're real good friends uh, and we co parent very well, she, she always did what was in the best interest of our son. So, in the situation between uh, when when we end up uh, getting a divorce and and, and she did not uh, and I'm I'm gonna say this I'm gonna go ahead and I'm say this you got something to say Duck you, you think he laughing at the comments No I'm just uh, uh I'm just laughing at the comment because it's hilarious how the show can swing one way and then all of a sudden it swing the other way um 
the reason the views are up so night, I mean up so high tonight, is because of me and because of what I said. The thing of it is, man, try to educate people who don't know. And we know who don't know because it shows what you know and what you don't know. It shows. See, it's up tonight because they want to see some drama. They want to see well, that ain't drama, no drama tonight. Mama. Well, ain't no drama tonight. That's why, no, but that's why duck, that's huh? what I was saying with, with, with uh, you know, with my situation, right? And that's why I'm talking about it, right? It got to be, it should be about what's the best interest of the child. That's what it really should should be and get out of our feelings and stop using kids as pawns. Stop using the system. Uh, and we're gonna talk about the system because the system, um, because the system is not something that that's favorable and it's like it's designed that way. But I would tell you, shout out to my son's mother who <clears throat> always made it to like, okay, she knew what was best interest for Robert, and it was for, for Robert. And she, we talked about it, and she talked about things about how. You know, and, and a lot of times where she had to deal with some stuff personally, because, well, you know, this, it, it, people assume that automatically it's supposed to be, you know, the child go with the, with the mother. My thing is this. If we're talking about financially, if the mother cannot take care of that child and the father can by himself, why is it in the best interest to go with the mother? Why can't it be the best interest for the child? And because, you know, the court always tend to uh, give custody to the kid, to the mother, instead of what's the best interest for the child. And most of the time that is rooted because people, they want people to be, uh, 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 I hope, I, I'm being honest, they, they want they want to use it. And, and, and I'm just go ahead and say, it. a lot of these mothers, and, and based on how we've seen, a lot of these mothers use their kids as financial pawns to get money. And they know they can leverage the system to get it. And they know that if you don't, if you get on child support, you get behind or whatever, they'll take your, you end up losing your driver's license. You end up losing all of these things, all these things. It goes on your credit. It goes on your credit. Yep. And you have yep. our back, back child support and all that stuff. Done that. Yep. And with, but, but, with interest but, over hundred dollars a month. <laughs> yeah. So when we start talking about it, right. Then they get into trying to control when they can see their kids and when not and all this. Listen, man, I'm telling you, you got to get out of your done feelings. When I was going through my divorce and I'm going to tell you this, right. And this is the speaking, this is speaking, being as transparent as possible. 2007. I'm, I'm living in Augusta, Georgia, me going home to Alabama. I got to drive through Atlanta, right. Why in the world, if my son and mama living in Atlanta, why wouldn't I call her and let her know that I'm coming through and we can meet up so she can at least see him if I'm driving through there? Even though whatever going on with us, even though I didn't want to do it, <laughs> I'm just being honest with you, I didn't want to do it. But I said, you know what? It don't matter how mad I am at her, right? She's still his mama. They ain't going to never change. And I've always respected her as his mother. So even at, even though I didn't want to, I would call and say, hey, look, I'm coming through Atlanta. We can meet up at this spot so you can see. But Larry, what you got to say about the system, man? I got to say this. And, um, you know, in Ellicott, you know, I ain't going to talk about you. We family. We got the same blood running through us. My great grandma and Lewis. And they ain't going to talk about Doug either. But um, Alabama don't have... Uh, in the system I saw how the system affected my two oldest boys I see how they have resentment and, and hatred and anger issues because of things that me and their mom did at that time because of the court system and we don't think about it as parents how is this going to affect the child when they get older we don't think about that one thing that I noticed about the system I took a woman to court Two full rights to be a father. I did that. And the judge still gave her sole custody, still like punished me. You don't have the right to bring a woman to court. But I, I want to be in my I want to be in my child life. The system use a black woman to bring down a good black man. Because fathers, black men are a necessity. They are valuable to our young people. You knew the statistics of children that 
you know, do certain crazy stuff, get in trouble. Their main cause is my daddy wasn't in my life. A lot of times it's not because the father don't want to be in the child life. A lot of times it's the mother and the sister. Well, Larry, let's say this. There are some deadbeat dads out there. There are. That's why I say a lot of times. A lot of times it is. Yeah, I, now, don't wanna, now, I, I don't want people to think that we trying to act like yeah, they ain't. No, there it, are some, there's some people out there that deserve to be deadbeats. They don't want to be in it. But guess what? The system don't go after those kind. Nope. The system don't go after the real deadbeats that ain't trying to be in your life. You you trying to put on child for $25 a month. But a joker like me that, you know, uh, doing good, $1,200 a month. That's right. Day, uh, three hours this day for your child. You know, no time. You want my money, but you don't want me to actually physically be in my child life. But, yes, you're right. No, so the, the system knows how valuable we are as men. That's why they try to keep us separated and they use y'all black women to do it. In an effect. White men don't have to go through this. Well, white folks know the value of the man. Well, they do. They they do. Like we go through it. Yeah, if a white they man go, go to they court, go it, but they don't go through it the numbers we go through. Though. They don't go in like us. But this, I, I will say this, right? I, I I'm not I'm I, I got a friend, a classmate of mine, who was a, a lawyer. Uh, he's a uh, he was a well, he's doing real estate right now. But when he was practicing, he was doing you know child support, right? And the, it is that the difference is this, right? You you don't well, the biggest difference that you see, you don't see um um. You don't see the kids being used as pawns when and when not they can see them. Robert, they really not being used as pawns because the court system see it like this because they know the statistics of children that don't have fathers active and they, they're killing two birds with one stone. I'm going to get the daddy and I'm going to get the child. Well, well, I, well I, don't, I don't think the that birds. it's... Well, yes, that because... That child gonna have some mental. That child have mental issues. One day that child gonna have some children of, of of his or her own, and they're not gonna know how to be parents because of what they went through at, at, uh, in their youth between their mom and their dad. Now they messed up. Now they raised no messed up children. Well, Michael. well, this is this. Go ahead, Robert. You know what I mean? You know because I'm I'm solution based. Okay, now because I had a very similar incident. With, with, you know, with the Hell County Court System to the point I wanted to go down there and blow the whole damn building up. Because uh, uh, that, uh, that DHR over there, I'm going to say it on record, ain't worth it. Because me living in another, I was paying $1,100 a month. And that was, what, 20 years ago because of the job that I had. And then I was threatened over the phone while I was in the military and said, we know we can get you for a raise. So you need not make, you need not make no smoke. You know, I said, are you threatening me? You know, if I, if I wasn't between wars or uh, uh, deployments, I would have had the time to fight, but they understand my situation. But this is the point I wanted to make. The point I want to make, if we, we, we've been mad at the system, the system is put there to mediate. Mm -hmm. If we can, if we can have something in place, so we don't get to the system, we can't learn to talk to each other. We it need to be some classes on how we can co-parent. They don't have stuff like that, and if they do, they're really there to mediate. Huh? They really don't mediate. We, they well, really we don't do work on the best interest. Of, the court supposed to do was in the best interest of the child. A well, lot of times, the court don't they do don't that. Do it. Well, they I mean, don't do it. But 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 to get to the court, we had to, we had to, we had to summons them. Well, let's just say this though. Let, let's say this, right? If <laughs> it, 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 I know this may go, this may go. I'm gonna go ahead on and say it, <laughs> right? A lot of this is because we are having kids outside of marriage. We're we're, we're participating in adult activities with people that we don't want to have long term situations with, right? And then, right, a lot of the times we then when this happens, now we got this lifelong commitment with this person. That we didn't even know if they were crazy or not crazy. And then now, because and we we already know how it is, a lot of times with these kids' issues, is I'm gonna use this kid because guess what? I don't want you, I don't want I'm mad because you moved on, you don't want me no more, you mess with somebody else, so I'm gonna make it hard on you. Like, don't act like that is not a, a factor in that. It is, Robert. But at the end of the day, 
Whether you want to be with that person or not, both of y'all were, were, were grown enough to lay down there and do what it takes to make a baby. At the end of the day, whether we're going to be together or not, we don't have to be together to raise this child together. Yeah, my daddy lived all the way in New York. My mama lived out here in Greenberg. Yeah. And, and by my daddy being in New York, them phone come. the time I did see him meant more to me just as if he was right there in the house. He still was being a father when he was 16 hours away. But he knew I, I'm up here working. I can't be in Alabama, but I still have a responsibility as a father. And that's what, you know, men and women need to come together. I don't care how mad you are at this man or how mad you are at that woman. That child should be the main common denominator that make y'all act like y'all like each other. So this child can see my mom and dad getting along. Hey, how was that? Let me, how, how much was your mother, uh, her actions in that facilitated that to happen? I mean, she's in high school. Yeah, she's in high school. But my dad had to make a decision as a young man. He had a choice. He could have went to New York and said, "Forget, forget him." You know what I'm saying? He could have lived a whole new life. My dad made the decision to stay a part of my life. My mom wasn't gonna kick against it, but my dad stepped up as a man. That's my son. But, but I, I, I commend your dad for that. Now, now, now she could have kicked against him, but she didn't. That's what I'm. But. How, Larry, how the many is from another generation? But but what I'm saying, that's what I'm talking about now. Your mother, right? It, it, she had to say, "Hey, look, it was in the best interest of for my child." That is not the case for a lot of people facing right now. And I'm gonna go ahead on and be honest. Let's just be honest about it, man. Let's just be honest. <clears throat> now, Doug ain't left the building. There's some technical difficulties he having on behind the scene, but uh, I'm I'm gonna go ahead on and be honest on this one, right? The reality is, most of the time, and I'm speaking to the ladies, right? Most of the time, you know these drugs weren't no good before you had a baby with them. And you, I'm, I'm just being honest, you know they weren't no good. They weren't yeah. taking care of two, three kids they had before. But they wanted them because somebody else was getting them. They wanted them because somebody else would get them. Now you get a baby with them, and then now all of a sudden, now you want you 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 crying wolf. And then these jokers, we got these these dudes out here. No, they ain't trying to take care of no kids. They don't want to have nothing to do with kids, and they going out there having kids with all these women. And I was watching uh, the, the Iana, uh, my aunt, whatever, um, uh, okay. Iana, you know, they had the dude that had like 33 kids, man. Like, listen, you do, to, to each his own, but for each child, there has to be a dedicated time for both parents to be involved. And it shouldn't be, and, it, and it's because both of y'all equally made that child, you shouldn't leverage no court system to, for you to have power to say when or whatever. Because I the agree. child is the one that lose. The child and is the one that lose. And Miss Charlene Jones made a good point. Parents don't need to be talking uh, down on each other uh, uh, towards the kids. I would Man. never. I don't care how bad, mad I may be mad at somebody. My, my child never had me talk bad about their mama. Ever. Because at the end of the day, that's your mama. I may feel some type of way about your mama, but if I hear you disrespect your mama, now I mean you got problem because that's your you don't give a one mama. Yep, exactly, and the same and vice versa. My, one. Mom, my dad was old, valid, you know, you know. I, I mean, this a little, <laughs> he was a wet brush out. My dad was a whole bunch of things, but my mama ain't <laughs> never to, to and all the time I know her in my life, she never said one bad thing about this man. And valid, you were a whole bunch of things, but uh, he was. But, you, but you'll never hear it out of Mary Tadmouth, ever. Ever. Because she didn't talk to us like we was adults. Mm -hmm. She didn't put us in that business. Exactly. I had to find the stuff out in the street. And I ain't find out until I got grown. She didn't put us in our business. And, and, and I'm glad you said that. Jaden put this comment. She said, somebody got to be grown. Right? And that's getting to the point to where you got to get out of your feelings. Like you seriously got as an adult, like sit down, take inventory, like take inventory. Why do you have to be in control? Why do you have to be the one to say so? What is it about? Like, that's what I'm just saying. If ask yourself that, because, oh, well, he ain't going to do this. And my baby, that's y'all baby. What do you think? And, you know, I look back on my situation and um, I don't, I don't think at the age I was mature enough to be able to sit in the same space and and go back and forth with my baby mama. I don't, I don't, because neither one of us were in a place and we and, and when it came to our parents, 
they didn't connect to make it to even to give a, a neutral place where we could fix this and work through this. You know, but I think back now that my youngest is 32 years old and looking at the things that she had to endure and the things that she's going through now. I wonder if I had that second tier to get along, could we could we could have could we could have been a little different? You know, yeah. so that so when it comes to my generation, you know, and you know, shout out to my mom, still struggling from her birthday, but um, you know, she did everything, you know, everything in the world to protect me. Everything in the world to protect all, all three of her children. And I was the first one to have children of all three of them. And I think it kind of disappointed them a little bit because I, you know, I was on the verge of getting married and I and it was an outside child. And just I, I was just a wild kid. Uh but it was uh, You was a whole lot of things. I feel like my daddy. But uh <laughs> <laughs> that's why. That's why you know, my mom ain't really. You know, she ain't talk no trash. But because my baby mama talked trash, we ha I have a relationship with with my child that can't that that programming has been going on so long that it will never change. So, hey, I'm gonna say this, man. We have been programmed in the black community to be baby mamas and baby daddies instead of mothers and fathers working together and partnering together. Amen. Just think Co-parenting is not hard. It is it's not really hard. not. It's not hard. You just got to get out your done feelings. Like that, uh, 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 <clears throat> Doug said, bring him back in. I, I'm bring him in. I see him. He I don't see nothing, but that's what we see right there, Doug. But, uh, it's not hard. It's not hard at all. Um, uh, and the reality is this, right? You just have to be mature about it, being a mature adult about it. Get out your feelings. Because most of the time, this will happen. Some situation happened between, between the two that caused them to break up. You mad about it. They may have cheated. They may have did that in third. Now you mad. Now you using that as a pawn to get back, but you don't realize that you're doing more damage to the kid than it is to the person. You still got that, you still going to have to have a relationship with them. Uh, at the end of the day, you're not gonna change. That's why I said for me, I'm being honest with you. With me, I was mad as I was mad as hell at my uh, my son, and mama. I was hurt, felt betrayed, all of that stuff, dealing with all those emotions. But guess what? No matter how mad I got, nothing would have ever changed the fact that she was his mother. And nothing. guess what? At the end of the day, no matter what how how mad I got, I had to respect her. Because guess what? She carried him for nine months for me. Facts. Did that. I always will respect her for that. Regardless of if we fall out, whatever, I will always respect her for that. Because she we ain't got to talk. To but guess what? She didn't have to do it. Right? Her body went through a lot of changes for me. That's why I said, uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Duck. duck, I mean, it duck back. Let me let me say that before Duck get in. About two years ago, um, my kid's mother called me and apologized for what she did in the past. She said, "If I know what I know now, I'm doing things differently because she saw how I was affecting our boy." Mm -hmm. That moment for me, and 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 for a long, I had to pray to ask God to really let me forgive her because she, when I said she took me, she took me down through that. But the fact that she woman enough to see I messed up concerning these kids. Yeah. I want to apologize to you. Good father. We were, and we were young, but if, she said if I would have known what I know now back then, I would have done things a whole lot of different. And I said, I thank you, but we can't do nothing about the past. We got to handle the now. Yeah. How do we move forward from here? And I think that's a lot of uh, 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 a lot of our issues. We still hold on to the past instead of saying, "How can we move forward from here?" But but but, Larry, and I, this is a good point, right? Many many, many times we got to stop getting mad at the other parent because we expect them to compensate for stuff that our responsibility. 
right? Yeah, I'm responsible for my child, but I ain't responsible for where you stay at. If you got a problem with where you stay at, let that child stay with me. And then you get yourself together. But then when you getting yourself together and I got the child, why you still want the child support? And, and, and thank me to God, some states have laws in place for fathers. Alabama have no laws. I'm actually, uh, I've been talking to legislators to actually speak on behalf of fathers. Because if you're a father, you usually have to fight to be a father. I mean, when you lay down with that man, you knew it was a possibility that you may have a baby, especially if you unprotected sick. And when the baby get here, you want to, you know, act a certain type of way and, you know, but Alabama <coughs> don't even care. You got other kids. If you're not on court order child support, they don't consider those kids. And child support is for a man that they refuse to do. He's being forced to do. Not for someone who don't mind being a father and taking care of his own. Alabama don't care. Well, they ain't on court order child support, so it don't count. Yeah, Alabama don't take into Alabama don't take into consideration that you got a mortgage, you got bills too. Don't care. They just, they just consider that mother bill, but you want but but you want the father to to to, to exhaust all of, all all his expenses over here. But then he got to provide a, house, a home for the child as well and buying clothes and doing stuff outside of child support. Alabama don't consider that. And I say that again because Alabama know how valuable the black father is. The prison system is filled with young black males. And the majority say they went down the road they went down because my father was not prison. Killing two birds with one stone. Yep. Because, now, because, I'm once, because once that go on your and, and I've been there, once that deadbeat dad status go on your credit because somebody said, well, he ain't did nothing in 20 some years. You can have proof. I took proof to court. Still got here with $10,000 in back pay. I had proof. Mm -hmm. I had with her. I had to pay. I, I had, had over $10,000 in back pay and it other. went on my credit. So it was high, but guess what? I couldn't get a loan because they said you got a deadbeat dad stand. If you, if you can't take care of your kids, you can't pay back this loan. You killing me? Thanks. Alabama still has a system in place to destroy black men. Black women, some of these guys are here, a lot of them, they deadbeat. You deserve to take them to court. But if you got a man that will provide, allow him the opportunity to be a father to his child. Give them that opportunity because it's about the child. Y'all time over with, but at the end of the day, how is the way y'all act and how's that, how's that gonna impact that child in the long run? That should be the main concern, that child. And a lot of them grow up with issues mentally because of mom and daddy. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't argue with you. Um, I'm not arguing with you on that one uh at all man i mean and, and this, this this but but this goes to what we see manifested in the schools the behavior, the behavior rolls over into the school it rolls, rolls over into the school it. system and you ask a lot of kids well my dad ain't in my life that's a lot of issues i get i would bet money and that's a lot of kids issue because daddy ain't there <laughs> and a lot of daddies ain't there because they won't be there because uh, because I was there one time, I ain't want to deal with the mama. I got tired of the foolishness, so get what? I had to isolate myself from my child. And I thought about it. Boy, you, you hurting the child. You, you, you ain't hurting the mom. You hurting the child. But, but Larry, the, the saying is you should have fought harder. Yeah. that's it. My son told me that. You ain't love me. You ain't fight how much money I spent in the court. I was fighting. You just knew I was fighting. But, but why I, do I have and to? It hurt, and it hurt me to hear him say that I did not love him because I didn't fight for him. But I never discussed with him what I was doing, that's for the court. I wasn't going to never let them know what's really going on. But in his mind, I didn't love him because I didn't fight for him. Yeah. That hurt me, that hurt me to the court to hear my son tell me that. And it's still in the back of my mind today. That's why I fight for all of them it's harder now. I go harder now. Because I don't want, now one, I don't want now another one to, 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 to say, you didn't love me because you didn't fight for me. And you know, for me, I, I got that. And I, and, I, and I try to get my kid to come to D.C. and live. But when you when you can live in Alabama and do what the hell you want to do, they know my life is structured. Yeah. I don't play. But you didn't fight hard enough. You didn't want to be here. My thing is, why do I got to fight at all? It shouldn't be a fight. It shouldn't be a fight. 
And that's why I'm going to Montgomery to, to, to advocate for fathers that shouldn't, that, that, that that's fighting that shouldn't have to fight. Go on, go on with you. I, I've been through some shit. But, but I, I do, I do want to say this. I do want to say this on, on this matter, right? Right. Where when we start talking about, um, we got to also address the root cause of this, man. We got to be more responsible about our choices, man. We got to be. Come on that. Listen, listen. I mean, we saying that no, no. But you don't know that for sure. No, but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. You know, like the kids say, the kids say, Linda, Linda, Linda. Listen, listen, listen. Right. <laughs> At the end of the day, right? We all make a every everything in life is about choices, and with each one as a consequence, either good or bad. Like it or not, hindsight is always 2020. But at that moment, we were thinking about one thing and we weren't thinking about what's gonna be tomorrow. And what mm -hmm. we need to do is we need to talk to the youth and people that's listening right now to say, hey, look, you need to think and consider other factors because guess what? Like it or not, if you want to accept it or not, these are some potential things that you may have to deal with. Uh uh, and, and, I, and I'll say this, right? And I know Ali Cat been on here. She's been making a lot of comments. I would just say this: those comments and stuff like that, it, it, it's it's not that's 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 to me that's I, that that is beyond distasteful. Uh, and the reason why I say it's beyond distasteful, right? Because if there's different ways of handling this and running the social media in the aspect of trying to make allegations about it, you know, I just think that that's not a good thing. Uh, not only not a good thing, but uh, this is not the platform to to bring it. Right to be honest with you, right? Uh, uh, and 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 I would just say this, man. Like we we just uh, the the reality is this, right? If you hurt and you disappointed about something, don't use those kids to get back at it. That's all I'm saying. Deal with and, it, whatever it is, and address it and move on. And and this is my thing, honestly. All right, go ahead. Sometime, listen, listen. What he listen, at? I'm saying. Listen. 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 Uh, listen. You hear me? Yeah, barely. Go ahead. Oh, there you go. Can you hear me? Barely. Go ahead. Block her ass and kick her ass. Block her ass and kick her ass. Block her down. Because to disrespect my boss, the minister will come back in. Well. You're breaking okay, up. Can you hear me? You sound like a robot, man. You're breaking up, duck. Try to hey, get with, that with, that, with that huge niche you got. Oh, no. oh. Breaking up bad, bad. Break a oh, break a one, two. Can't hear you, big trucker. He went out. But this is my thing. Sometimes it takes mediators that don't know either party to call both of y'all off on y'all foolishness. Somebody that ain't gonna, you know, that's gonna be impartial. That ain't, you know, because sometimes we don't see mistakes and it takes somebody else to call it but it's up to us to to take that co corrective criticism and apply the, the 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 advice that's given to make things better for the child and we need to mediate it before we, before we contact the court system and, and and one thing i can say about uh about alabama court system before you go to court they will assign a mediator but everything is not worked out in mediation because sometimes people got their mind made up i'm having them. it my way or no way hey shell yeah shell I can hear you. Uh, you're the moderator, right? Yeah. Block her ass because to disrespect my wife, I don't play that. Block her ass. And we don't usually block nobody on the show. And for you guys, for you to be the moderator and you sit up there and let her continue to disrespect my wife, me one thing, that's okay. No. But to disrespect my wife, I, I'm talking. But to let her no, sit man, up there and blatantly up, up, disrespect hold up, hold up, block her. Duh. Block Duh. Listen, man. You bringing that energy towards me, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with that right there. I don't even see none of that. That's I, what I'm saying. I, I, I ain't, ain't, ain't seen nothing either. Now, we ain't watching. Now, I know I ain't watching the uh, other comments. I'm, watching I'm not watching that. comments. I don't watch but as far as with oh, anything, as far as with, with, with making me responsible for anything, that ain't it. Like that ain't that right there. Ain't you should have sent a note in the uh in, in our little chat to say she did respect because I I'm I'm watching the, the, the note uh the comment, but I ain't watching I ain't watching them like that. But I did address those, but at the end of the day, 
I ain't had nothing to do with that as far as with uh uh what what is transpiring on that one. Uh in the disrespect as far as with uh you know things going to it. It wasn't like we sit here and enabling that. That is not what it is. And I just wanted to address that tonight. That right there ain't what it is. So uh so just wanna um just wanna put that. You can't block them, duck. You don't have a block. You have access to block. Yes, you do. You don't have admin rights? You took me off. Somebody took me off. off. I did not take you off. Somebody took me off. I don't know about no admin. I ain't no admin. I don't know about being an admin. But I didn't. I didn't yeah. see no uh, no disrespect because I ain't. I, don't, I ain't been watching like that. But if that's the case, no disrespect to nobody wives and stuff. They they're taking a whole nother different level. Dig this go. Dig this go, man. Why are we having this conversation? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, conversation. This right. Here. This, 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 this I thought we speak in general. Uh, what is the time? So why are we having this personal? Their personal business. Talked about on this show. I thought. Have you been reading the comments? Have you been reading the comments? I didn't see that. I, I don't. I just feel like this. Have, is, this is. Have you been reading the comments? I am. Have you been reading the comments? I can't hear. Doug, you're breaking up bad. You've been reading the comments. You, you're breaking up again, brother. Oh. You're breaking up again. I promise you, I'm not. Well, how would he know if he's not breaking up or not? Well, I don't know. That's all. But, but we're going we gonna, to, but back to what we were talking about, it needs to be addressed. And the big thing about it is when we start thinking about who we partner with, the best thing to do is, you know, be considerate. I'm just being honest with you. It may be hot in that moment right there, right? But you start looking at certain things, start looking at certain family members, how certain family members act, and that may be the best thing smoking. But then when you look down, man, you know to know what you have to deal with. But then when you find yourself in that position, the best thing to do is consider the kids, right? Consider the kids and make what's the best interest for the kids. Period. That all that should matter. The that child. All that, that right there, all that should matter. So, man, we'll go ahead and on, man. Another hot topic this week, man. Uh, Brittany Griner getting released uh, for uh, the prisoner. Uh, they did a prison swap. Um, I can't recall the dude's name, but the dude, the, they, Dr. They, Dill. Dr. Dr. Dill. Dill. Right. So, uh, the guy, they, uh, Nicholas Cage, they made a movie roughly about his life, The Lord of War. And I seen him already made a comment that he support the war in Ukraine and, and he's willing to help if they need him. Uh, I think that yep. from this, uh, to be honest with you, uh, you know, different people were saying, Brittany, um, uh, you know, Jaden said she, she glad Brittany home. But I would just say this. Jaden, if, if it was you over there, you would still be over in Russia right now. Wouldn't have made the news. Me neither. <laughs> I'm just being honest with you. Uh, and, um, and, and yeah, I mean, that's just me on that one. Uh, I know a lot of people uh, opinionated about it, but that just, it is what it is on that. I just personally didn't like the fact that uh, not not knocking her being home. I just didn't like the fact of trading prisoners. Um, you had somebody that had uh, a high profile American athlete who got caught and convicted for having, I think, hash or weed. I think it was hash mm -hmm. or weed. Same thing. Same thing. And then you had another individual who pretty much was an uh, international dr uh, um, weapons dealer that was arming. Uh, it was arming many of the uh, countries in Africa when they was having the genocide and they was killing all the Africans over there. Yeah, they get the name Dr. Dr. Death. Yeah, they call her Dr. Death. Uh, um, and, you know, those are the things uh, <laughs> Nisa said, Brittany better not touch that, that <laughs> touch nail pen, even an ink pen, use a pencil. <laughs> she had caught with it uh, coming through the airport, so um this is my thing about that. I hear people they 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 hurrah and ha ha and all type of stuff, but don't really know the seriousness behind the trade. Um, Russia tried to get Trump to swap for him too, but Trump was like, "Nah." Yeah, 
I ain't gonna do it. So when they got Britney, that was like, you know, a hand up for them. Cause you know, you got LeBron and everybody speaking against, you know, putting, you know, pressure on the president. We gotta bring her home. But the thing about it is, for me being a combat soldier fighting one of the first, first boots on ground in the, uh, to invade Baghdad in 03 and going to Afghanistan, to me, that's an insult. That's a slap in the face because this man, he armed a lot of countries with weapons that killed a lot of people. That's how you get the name, the Dr. And, Death. And they killed, one plus one yeah, equals but, two. But Larry, they killed a lot of black people in Africa. Black people. He we, armed, we, we, when, if, when we talk about them genocides and everybody remember them pictures yeah. in, in, in the early 2000, mid 2000s. Little children and everybody. Dead, uh, like even like hotel, in Rwanda and all of that, he had his hand to arming the militias over there. So the movie Hotel Terrible One and those militias, those weapons that they had, that was the guy that was behind a lot of that. Because after Russia fell, uh, the USSR fell, he just had a whole treasure troll of weapons that he got his hand on and was just arms dealing across the world. So that's who it was. Um, and, and I would just say that, uh, you know, it was calculated. Um, and, you know, we are, um, it was calculated. I just don't like, you know, at the end of the day, when you're traveling in different countries, you got to be cognitive, man. I mean, oh, them, them people, they, they, it ain't the same like, like it is in the States. And, and we don't people. supposedly negotiate with terrorists. Yeah. But then also they're talking about, um, they're talking about, um, um, they're talking about um, the Marine that's over there, right? Uh, and they're talking about Marine being over there. And, For allegedly espionage. Yeah, but the same thing. I say this with the Marine. I've seen some other things, you know. He was in up, got a dishonorable discharge out of the Army for stealing money while he was over, over in Iraq. Uh, um, and, and, you know, I'm not saying that, but what I am saying is we just get emotional talking about, you know, free Britain. If because you LeBron me, says so. Know about you? I'm just and saying. Don't care about you. And and we that's all that's all I'm saying. We 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 get emotionally involved with these people that don't even know us. And yeah, I'm glad she's home. But at the same point, a lot of that could have been it. It could have been avoided based off of personal actions. And we never like to talk about that. We never like to talk about that. And it could have been another way. If they came up with that solution, they come up with another one. If that was, Man, anyway, she knew that was in her bag. She just thought because she won them a couple of championships and she was Britney, uh, Britney, that wasn't that gonna happen to her. Yeah, and yeah, my mom just said she done it before, you know, and, and and got away with it, but you know. But that's not, you know, for me, that's not even the point. The point is that we have prepared for a war. We have, we have let, we have let somebody on the national terrorist list. We have let him free back to the country so he can continue to do what he's doing. And at the, end name. The, at the end of the day, if, if in negotiations, if you came up with this, then you continue to negotiate and come up with something else. This yeah. is not the only solution. Well, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a solution based person. I'm like, okay, what well, can we do to fix this? I know you don't like Trump. I don't like him either. But he was the president and he did have a relationship with Putin. It was, it, with all the stuff we got on Donald Trump right now, that they want to put him in jail, if, if you just expunge some of that stuff and say, if you bring him back, then, then we'll, we'll, we'll take some of it, we'll take the tax stuff off. Because I'd rather, you, I'd rather you have somebody in the United States that you can use as leverage than to use somebody for somebody else. And don't say it can't be done because they did it with the Obama administration. When uh, North Korea had those two uh, reporters over there and uh, uh, the president of North Korea didn't want to talk to a black man. So he went, he had to humble this seven, go back to Clinton. Clinton but, took Air Force One, jumped on that plane, went on there, got them two girls, brought himself back here, was back in 24 hours. But but he talked to Dennis Rodman. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what's up with him and Dennis. That, that, that's a whole other uh TV show. But uh it's something if you came up with this solution, you can come up with another one. Well, I mean, but that, that's always going to be something. And I would say that I think it's something bigger than that. I think Brittany Grind is a smoke screen. Just being honest with you, that's just me personally. Um, and I think it's more to that because um, I, I don't think it's just that thing on the surface. But at the end of the day, um, I didn't lose any sleep. Uh, <laughs> I lose any sleep over it. But, um, you know, we, we, we quick to easily be um, – we quick to easily be uh, – <clears throat> Stimulated uh, by things on social media, uh, or, or, or stories or behind stories, 
But so we we talked about um uh, um giving away a giveaway, right? So we got a giveaway we want to do tonight, right? Uh, and with that giveaway, uh, what, what we want to do is uh, a number gen. I'm gonna do a number generator, uh, and I'm about to pull it up right now. And what I ask everybody to do is pick a number between one. We got 98 people watching right now. We uh, pick a number between one and a hundred. One and a hundred. One and a hundred, and we'll have one winner. We we'll pick a number one and a hundred. Uh, well, yeah, Portia said this is great for the 2024 election. I would tell you, uh, yeah, Portia, you can play, but uh, said um, M Michael uh, Parson, Michael Parson from the Cowboys tweeted, he said, yeah, that's good, but we still ain't going to vote for you. And I'll tell you, uh, a lot of sentiment is changing in the African-American community about voting uh, Democrat. Uh, but, yeah, go ahead and put your numbers in. We're going to give it a little bit. Um, and I would tell you, we will pick, uh, as we go down the list, if you got a double number, we're going to pick the first number that we see. And I want people to see that I'm not cheating. <clears throat> I know when I was a viewer, you cheated a lot. Oh, uh, no, that was, you said, I think that that's a, I think that's just a personal bias right now. All right. I like that. That's, that's, that's nice. Well, that's a nice comeback. You did good. Yeah, you see how I did that? You see yeah, how I, I did like that? that. <laughs> yeah. Like, why are you never win this? Why are you never pull my number? Uh, uh, Larry, uh, Miss uh, Dale Mayna picked seven first. So everybody, yeah. want everybody to see this, right? And it ain't the number. She did. That's what I meant. That's what I meant, Della. I don't know why I said Mother Ryan. Della, man. I don't know why I called Mother. I guess you remind I'm, me. <laughs> I'm going I'm to I'm 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 press it on here. I'm going to give it about two more minutes, then I'm going to press it so that uh, we can see who we got. And what you'll be winning, and you'll be winning a custom uh, uh, um, be, be getting a custom uh, rug from Jay's Custom Rug, so sponsored by the Black Belt Experience. So everybody see it right here, and I want everybody to see it. Y'all see that, right? Mm. Let's see. I can get to generate, and bam, seventeen. We got. A I 17. saw. It. I think I saw a seventeen. Let me see. I. I I'm, I'm a, I'm a, nope. The number that nope. we didn't see. I didn't see a seventeen. All right. So everybody see again. I'm about to press generate. Eighty. Do we got an eighty? I see an 82. Nope. We don't have an 80. And let me see. Last one. 19. Mm -mm. We getting all the numbers that don't there ain't nobody get. Looking through. Don't have it. Okay. Then now. Here we go. Generate 77. Mm-mm. <laughs> Uh -uh. It's like they picking all the numbers that they don't have. Oh. Nope. We had some nope. that was low. All right. And here we go. 83. Man, here we go. God dog. Maybe we should go with lower numbers. No, because you got the we had the number of people. I had an 82, not an 83. And 15. Bring yep. Brenda Teacher. Brenda Teacher, congrats. Mm-mm. Francis Gray. Francis Gray? Yeah, she before Brenda Teacher. Oh, yeah, Francis Gray. I'm sorry. Yeah, Francis Gray. We did say that. Francis Gray is the winner. So, Francis Gray, we'll reach out to you, get your information, and we're going to make sure that you get the uh, you get the free, you're the winner of the free uh, uh, custom rug. And speaking of custom rug, um yeah we got we got some things going on um uh yeah jay's custom rug you you the winner so congratulations with that uh and so you said y'all cheated now listen you saw me i was pressing it so you can't say it. you uh 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 so next week man listen we got the live show coming up next week so it will be held at the 
uh, National Guard Army in Greensboro, Alabama. It's going to be earlier than it usually is, from 2 to 5. Uh, we'll be a uh, meet and greet uh, to see, and then you can guys see us doing a live show. Uh, we just wanted to show a level of appreciation for the continued support of the Black Bed Experience. Man, I'm just, I'm real excited about this, man. Uh, we're going to have some 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 appetizers and uh, um, we're going to have some other stuff, man. Uh, uh, just looking forward to just sitting down and seeing some faces. Um, and, you know, I'm excited about this. I'm, I'm excited about this, right? Oh, they said, Brenda, teacher one, let me go back. Let me go back. Look, look, they get, they, 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 they get us right. Brand's the name before, um, Brenda teacher. Yeah. Yeah, Francis Gray was was there before. Let me go, Brenda Teacher. They said Brenda Teacher. She about six, seven, and eight down. Ten down. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, uh, but yeah, with that one, man, I'm excited about that. So, at the National Guard Army, uh, we're looking looking to uh, see see everybody out, um, just just engage and 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 love on each other. Uh, also, just excited about. Um, you know the Christmas holidays. Holidays coming up. People spending time together. Uh, I would tell you is a great thing. And I know that you know through everything that you can have negative. We we will be faced with negativity. We will be faced with things. We will get upset about things. We will have disagreements, right? But at the end of the day, what we can do is we can uh, we can come together, work for solutions, talk about solutions, and work together to make the community better, right? Um, and I will tell you, we try to address things that impact everybody. But uh, what you got going on this week, Robert? Uh, I mean, um, I got a couple. I got to go back to the VA and fight with them on Thursday. <laughs> and for all these people that come on my comment tell, telling me about my experience, I need you to step in these 15 and a half for a minute. And then, and then you'll understand well why I demand what I volunteer. I volunteered service to, to protect this country. When I came back here, I came back with a whole bunch of stuff that I ain't that I didn't come here with. So when I go up in that VA, I put it out there because I'm doing I'm doing a um I'm documenting every incident I have, whether it's good or bad. I give yeah. praises to the one that are right because I when it's right, I go on I go on my book and I and I and I and I send a shout out. But when it's wrong, I do that too. And that's fair. Just because your experiences are not mine, I'm happy for you. But there's more people that have experiences that I'm having than the ones you have. It is and they true. might, and they might not attend the same VA you go to either. Right, and they might not attend, and then they might be, they might not know. To, to, to when people watch your post, to, it, what it does is tell the world that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. That means that some people, some people suffer in silence. Hey, and I'm glad you brought that up, Robert. Um, Recently, a few weeks ago, uh, right now is about a month ago. Uh, lost a guy that I served with. Saw that uh, he had died, just suddenly died, passed. Um, mm -hmm. he, had, he moved out to uh, Seattle. We served together in the same unit in Germany. And uh, recently, uh, about a week ago, his wife made a post and I realized that he took his life on suicide. Uh, and he was the guy that he was in the room, the life of the party, always smiling, um, never seemed to be down. And you just never know what people are going through. And why am I bringing that up, right? Because we talk about a lot of stuff, right? But, you know, the thing about it is life, we, only, we all get one shot at life, right? And people go through things. Like you said, people suffer in silence. And yeah, we can disagree, we can be up and down, but I'm telling you, it's something about being there for people and supporting people and understanding that, you know, you may not see what people are going through, but you don't know the power of you just saying, hey, how you doing? You don't know the power of just checking on them. You don't know the power of just being nice. You don't know what the power that does uh, to engage people. So I would just say this, man, don't take it. If you get an inkling to call somebody, call them. If you see somebody, somebody come across your heart, don't sit down and wait on that. Right, uh, I think we had a, a suicide in Greensboro not recently. Yeah, we did. We and, did. and this, and during this time, this time of the year is the worst time of the year. 
you know, when it comes to um, mental illness and, and, and suicides and stuff. So, you know, watch out for each other. And, and, you know, and before, think before you speak. Mm-hmm. Because when somebody cries out, you know. It's what, for a reason. It's for a reason. It's for a reason. And when, and, and when they talk when they, when they talk about an injustice being done, just because you live, live in a place of privilege. Yeah. Yeah. You understand that and, and understand that, you know what? Somebody listened to that. Somebody mm-hmm. saw that and said, I'm not the only one. Well, that's, that's, when, that's when everything comes in your life wrong with when you isolate yourself from the world. When you yeah. know that you're not dealing with it, when you know you somebody else is dealing with this, why is this fly? Well, you know if somebody else is dealing with this, <laughs> then you know you're not alone. And that gives and, and, and that gives people hope. Yeah, you know? um yeah, you, you're right. Duck said the first 50 people who put their thighs on the screen get a free prove me wrong shirt. So so the, I know people have been putting their thighs, so he said you get a free prove me wrong shirt. So so duck <laughs> duck gonna give away a free prove me wrong. So Larry, what you got going on this week, man? Finals, man. Finals and papers. Finals and papers. Finals. Pray for me. Hey, I pray for you, man. Look, I'm excited, man. This week, man, I'll be back down in the great state of Alabama, back in the Black Belt. I'm uh, coming back. I'm trying to see a lot of people. And I'll tell you, if I don't get to see you, please understand, right? Come to the show. Come to the show. I try to see you, but I'm, I'm going to do my best to get around. But I'm trying to... I'm 30 miles from Canada. <laughs> Go ahead. How many seats? How many seats we got so we, uh, we can see how we gonna navigate this? Cause I mean, we ain't gonna fit everybody. No, everybody can't. But everybody can come by. But everybody mm-hmm. may not get a seat during the show. Right, 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 right. Yeah, and that's that's the whole thing. We want to take pictures, do all of that stuff, man. Uh, uh, just looking forward to it. I mean, I, I would tell you, we really, really enjoy. Um, and we talk about it all the time, but we, man, we proud of being from the Black Belt, man. Proud of being from home. I'm looking forward to coming, seeing some people, loving on some people, spending some time back home, uh, getting ready to, to get on that bird, fly early Tuesday morning to get back. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and and uh, be back and and get on back up here. Man, I'm, I'm looking forward to the holidays as well. Got some studio time book, man. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna record some more, man. Drop some more hot fire, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and have Robert Tab on back up with it, you know. That's right. I yep. did, nobody nobody want to put me on. Nobody want to put me on program. I want to be on program. Wait, this damn fly. Uh, hey, and I'm ahead. getting food, so people, you know, you better get there early. Better get that order. Uh, chef, chef Tab, Chef Tab doing the food, y'all. Yeah, well, so, Chef get Tab there. gonna get it good. We, I mean, it's gonna be, you know, we try, we trying to do, it's, we trying to do some nice things. So, uh, it, it, it's gonna be classy. Yeah, sir. Miss, Miss, Mr. Hines definitely plan to come to uh, Utah, go spend some time. Hey, and uh, looking forward to Mayor Jones uh, Johnson in uh, Utah. Looking forward to her coming up. Reached out to her to invite her to come on to the show. Very proud of what it is. I'm gonna reach out to the reform mayor. You got a lot of. I'm telling you, man. Listen, it's a lot of. Uh, what I do is I go through and just try to find all of the cities in the area that got Facebook pages, all of the different groups, all of the newspapers, all the schools. I try to find them throughout the Black Belt and follow them just so we can see what's going on. And I would tell you, if you just do that and just go follow and like, you'll see it's a lot of great stuff going on. Um, um, uh, they got a restaurant in Utah, sold out cafe, and I shared it on the Black Belt Experience. Boy, they, boy that food, I know I got to go try that. It's uh, they, they had oxtail uh, pasta. It's, it's jumping. What's up? I say oh. it's jumping. Oh, it's jumping. Okay, oxtail okay. So pasta. oxtail. They had ox. They had. Uh, <clears throat> I'll send you a picture, Rob. But they had the pasta with the oxtail on the top. <laughs> so look at Robert like that's Hey, good. he thinking now. He thinking. He try. He trying to create that thing in the head right now. Yeah, that shell coming out. He trying to see how it blends. <laughs> that um. That old, um Sound like sound like a, a expensive beef stew. <laughs> hey, you know, <laughs> that's a great way of putting it. Uh, Miss Jones said, "I'm coming to see to eat seafood with Mister uh, Long." Oh, and hey, look, shout out to uh, um, uh, the Ward family and the Lee family for putting on the blues event in uh, Greensboro last night. 
I, I saw some of the videos. Like they had a good time. I forgot. I would have stayed down there if I would have known. I forgot about that. I would have been in there with Jeff Floyd. Probably sung a little background with him or something. But I forgot about it. I would have sung. I probably sung the lead just to pass me the mic. But you yeah. know, I, I forgot about it. I forgot about it. But yeah, man, just 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 looking forward to that. And for real, we really sincerely thank you guys so much for tuning in on the Black Bed Experience. Um, looking forward to next week. To go a live show, live show. So you guys will be up front and see everything behind the scenes and see how we get down. Behind the scenes. <laughs> and, and let me say one more thing, Robert. I, I, go ahead. You know, you, you mentioned about all the graduates that we done had from from our area, man. People getting their doctorate degrees. It's been a lot that have came through our area as for student wise that are out doing greater things in, in other areas. We need to really sit down and think about all we've lost by allowing our hometown Jews to leave mm. because they weren't valued. Thanks. Think about it. We would have been able to retain all of these homegrown people that's out here with their doctor degrees and things like that. Do you know what we can do within our area? Mm -hmm. Do you really know what we let slide by in other states and uh, are, are, are benefiting from what was born and raised in our area? Like infrastructure. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I said that to say this, support your own, encourage your own. We got a lot of people from Greensboro, Marion, but they moved off and doing things for the hometown. And the Bible speaks of that. It does, but we need to start valuing our own. And if we can value our own, our hometowns, our little country towns will be way farther advanced than they are now but it's because we hate on each other too much because we don't like them our grandmama didn't like them we don't like we, we got to get beyond that foolishness swallow our pride and support one another because at the end of the day we all we got or oh, separate the two you can still not just you can, you can just like a person still be able to, uh, and have a common goal and so, benefit from what they got to offer remove your feelings fact I mean, what they got to offer. Yeah. And leverage, man. Just that's think about that. Yeah, just leverage. It, it, and and exactly. that's, one thing, that's one thing we don't talk about in our community is leveraging, right? Uh, one of the things when you look at what Deion Sanders did, he was able to leverage relationships to get access to resources to better his situation. And like, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of relationships or people that got knowledge. But they don't they ain't appreciate it from back home because everybody see them as a common person or they don't value what they telling them. Or know, you know, well, you I know, know some on you. Yeah, yeah, like <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, but hey, we want to thank everybody. Look forward to coming back home. Thank everybody for tuning in to the Black Bed Experience. See you guys next week. Hey, remember mm. uh, uh, uh December the 18th from 2 to 5 p.m. at the Army, National Guard Army in Greensboro, Alabama. The flyer is on the Black Bed Experience page now. See you guys later. God bless. Now, Kim said she thought she was going to.